This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Apollo Creed meets the Italian Stallion. <laughs> Sounds like a damn monster movie. Rocky Balboa? Never heard of him. Look, it's the name, man. The Italian Stallion. The media will eat it up. If you're a boxing fan, then there's probably at least a pretty good chance that you're also a fan of the Rocky movies. Indeed, the original Rocky was such a great movie that even a lot of people who otherwise have no real interest in boxing can love and appreciate Rocky. You know, I've been coming in for six years, and six years you've been sticking it to me. I want to know how come. You don't want to know. Yeah, I want to know how come. Would you be interested in fighting Apollo Creed? World Heavyweight Championship? Because you had the talent to become a good fighter, and instead of that, you became a leg breaker to some cheap second rate loan shark. Well, it's just that you see, uh, I fight in clubs, you know, and I'm really a ham and egg, or this guy, he's the best, and uh, it wouldn't be such a good fight. The main reason so many people have an appreciation for the original Rocky is because of good old fashioned storytelling. You have an underachiever who never believed in himself. And for the first time in his life, he rises to the challenge when given the opportunity of a lifetime. So all I want to do is go to distance. Well, now, what does that mean? That means if he can't fight, I bet he can cook. <laughs> you see, and that bell rings, and I'm still standing. Where did you get the name Italian Stadium? Oh. Uh, I invented that uh, about eight years ago when I was eating dinner. I'm gonna know for the first time in my life, see? That I weren't just another bum from the neighborhood. In his defining moment, Rocky went the distance and had nearly upset the heavyweight champion of the world. Part of the appeal of the original Rocky was that all of the characters had their fair share of flaws, but they also tended to be likable and very easy to relate with. And these core central characters enabled the franchise to develop and evolve as it did over a 30 year period. The original Rocky was a terrific film and one of the greatest boxing movies ever made, if not arguably the greatest boxing movie ever made. But Rocky was more of a real movie, whereas the sequels had sort of a life of their own. Here are my attempts to rank the sequels from worst to first, starting with the worst. Rocko made you shot, you know that? He's the real champ. You're just a goddamn joke. Now just get out of here before I break the back. Come on, come on. Hey, hey. Now you knocked him down. Why don't you try knocking me down now? For my personal tastes, Rocky V was clearly the worst sequel in the franchise. But Rocky V wasn't without its own charm. The biggest problem for me and no disrespect meant towards Tommy Morrison, I think he was a very good boxer in his day, but Morrison really wasn't much of an actor, and following in the footsteps of Mr. T and Dolph Lundgren was going to be a very tall order in any case. Man, I ain't you, and you ain't Mick. Man, when are you gonna understand that? When are you gonna understand this is a business? Look, Rocky, you took me as far as you could, but Duke gave me my title shot, you didn't. And if you want to keep training me, then do it. But if you don't, don't! But it's my way, it's the highway. Aside from that, I didn't think the story in Rocky V was as interesting as the stories from the previous sequels. And something about the eventual final street fight ending just never felt right in the same spirit of the previous Rocky installments. All the same, the characters of Rocky, Adrian, and Paulie still had some quality scenes reminiscent of their previous efforts. And my favorite part of this movie was probably this scene. When I leave you, you'll not only know how to fight, you'll be able to take care of yourself outside the ring too, is that okay? And that scene right there basically summed up the whole movie. Despite losing his fortune, despite suffering head trauma, and despite having his misguided trust betrayed by some scumbag, when it was attention that would have been better directed towards his son, Rocky's battling spirit of optimism remains intact throughout all of these hardships. Get up, you son of a bitch! Because Mickey loves you. Okay? 
I give Stallone a lot of credit for trying something different here with Rocky V, but I think he may have been better off embracing the formula he had already previously perfected. Because as the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, moving along with the countdown. It's already over. You can count them over till it's over. What's that from, in the 80s? That's probably in the 70s. I liked Rocky Balboa, the sixth movie in the franchise. I thought it had a better overall story than the previous installment from 16 years earlier. And again, no disrespect meant to Antonio Tarver here this time. Tarver was a terrific prize fighter in real life. But again, Tarver wasn't really much of an actor. I think Sly would have been better off going with a real actor for the antagonist. Favor, I'm having this exhibition for you all. And you're gonna get up here and make a mockery out of me? I'm the champ. I mean, I get pissed, this guy get hurt. Originally, I think I read that Stallone wanted Roy Jones Jr. to play the role of Mason Dixon. I'm not sure if Tarver scoring that second round knockout over Roy had anything to do with any of this, but it reminded me of the same sort of thing the WWF did when Buster Douglas defeated Tyson, and Buster was the one who got the chance to knock out the macho man Randy Savage. But you all must have forgot, Roy can actually act. Excuse me. Aren't you Bruce Jenner? <laughs> no, I am not. Are you sure? <laughs> Don't make me knock you out. Another big problem with Rocky Balboa was the absence of Adrian. Yeah, Adrian was often a big drag who always seemed to be ruining all of Rocky's fun, but she was an integral part of the franchise who always provided balance to Rocky's life. It was cool to see the return of Spider Rico, but there wasn't nearly enough Tony in Part 6 for my liking. Or in Part 5 either, for that matter. A little more Tony could have gone a real long way, and I think it would have been cool if Tony was a permanent fixture at Rocky's restaurant. Beat this guy. You need speed. You don't have it. So what we'll be calling on is good old-fashioned blunt Force trauma. Cast iron, pile driving punches that will have to hurt so much they'll rattle his ancestors. In the end, as Rocky was taking a stroll down memory lane throughout most of part six, the audience got to tag along and join him for those experiences. Between Stallone and Young, the characters of Rocky and Paulie alone made this a worthwhile exercise in nostalgia. But that's really all it was. Even if I loved the way Rocky was portrayed as an old wise man who bestowed wisdom and cheer on all he encountered. But as we move along to the final three sequels in the countdown, here is where the true fun begins. You start fighting right head, and then you change suddenly, and that'll make history. But first, you gotta get speed. Now I show you a trick how to get some speed in them legs. You have to wear that stinking sweatshirt. Well, it brings me luck, you know. You know what it brings? It brings flies. Demon speed. Speed's what we need. We need greasy, fast speed. Rocky II was an absolute powerhouse where all of the central cast members were firing on all cylinders. It was a fitting follow-up to the original in every way, shape, and form. And while the entire cast was terrific, it was the incredible dynamic between Sylvester Stallone and Burgess Meredith that really made Rocky II such a big standout in the franchise. Now listen, I want you to try, listen to me. I want you to try to, to chase this little chicken. Well, what do I gotta chase a chicken for? It's embarrassing, you know? Turn to business, will you? Jab that till it hoits 500 times without stopping, you hear me? Ready? Yeah, well, I'd rather eat it than chase it. It ain't very mature, Listen, but I'll, if you say Well, so. neither are you very mature. 500 high ones, go! What was I, seven or eight? Move your tail! You look like a girl out there. What's the matter with you? I feel like a Kentucky Fried Idiot. So Rocky and Adrian get married, Apollo wants redemption, Mickey has a master plan, but Rocky is all distracted because Adrian don't want him fighting. And then things get even worse for Rocky's preparations when Adrian slips into a coma and delivers prematurely. Now Rocky has no motivation at all for anything beyond Adrian's well-being. And Mickey stands by Rocky during his troubled time. And then it happens. There's one thing I want you to do for me. 
Win. Win. What are we waiting for? So now Rocky is all sorts of motivated, and Mickey is fired up. Meanwhile, Creed has been having this absolutely tremendous training camp, and Apollo is hell-bent on proving the first fight was nothing more than a fluke. And all the while, Carl Weathers is kicking an awful lot of ass in the role of Apollo Creed. Look, nobody goes the distance with me. Get up out of that chair, Chubb, and let's finish this fight right now. If you call yourself the champ, you're a fake. The fight was a fake. Go kill yourself. Wouldn't you rather play with the children than read hate mail? Look, I don't know about anybody else, but as long as I'm going to be promoting this fight myself, I want a lot more pressure put on for a rematch. How much did you get to carry that bum for 15 rounds? You're a disgrace to your people. Why can't you ignore it? Because there's still a lot of people out there that think he won. There's a lot of people out there accusing me of having the fight fixed, accusing me of being a fake and insulting my kids at school. That's why. Man, I won, but I didn't beat him. So the big fight happens. Rocky is pleased his robe is less baggy, and Rocky proceeds to get thoroughly outclassed and beaten up by Creed for the majority of the first 14 rounds. Creed was schooling Balboa. But then, in one of the most ridiculous and dramatic endings you could ever dream up to conclude this high-profile championship rematch, this happens. And Stallone really made this work well. <laughs> line right there is arguably the most memorable line from the entire Rocky franchise. And that's really saying something here, because the Rocky movies have an awful lot of memorable stuff going on. That's where you're wrong. This is not just an exhibition fight that doesn't mean anything. Look, this is us against them. What are you talking about? Come on. Rocky IV was the apex of 1980s Cold War movies. It had all of the brilliance of Rocky III, with an added dose of tension that resonated throughout the international community. Dolph Lundgren's portrayal of the invincibly ruthless Ivan Drago was nothing short of sublime. And once again, the core cast members in the film were firing on all cylinders. By this point in the franchise, the 80s bromance between Rocky and Apollo had reached full blossom. It's great. I'm getting punchy just watching it. Look at this. Mama Mia, what you using for a chin there, I don't want to change, man. I like who I am. I like who you are, too, but look at that. <laughs> yeah, you should have slipped that one. Yeah, you definitely should have slipped that one. You don't want to believe this, but that, that ain't us up there no more, Pa. We can't do that the way we did it before. And without some, some challenge, without some damn war to fight, then the warrior may as well be dead, Stallion. The decision to kill off Apollo Creed was a risky one, but I understand why Stallone did it. It was a powerful plot device, but at the same time, the decision permanently eliminated Apollo Creed, and Creed was the coolest character in the franchise. But killing Creed worked for this movie, and Stallone's understanding of his day was impeccable. Rocky IV was basically one awesome montage after another. With a great soundtrack, this back in the day when MTV still played music videos all day long. And not just any videos, but 80s music videos. And the contrasting training sequences between Balboa and Drago were brilliantly incorporated into their very own powerhouse montage. So Rocky goes on to get his ass kicked throughout the fight, where he's literally getting clobbered all over the ring. Rocky does what Rocky does best. He absorbs a tremendous amount of punishment while showing incredible heart and determination, which enabled him to have a few good moments of his own, this being one of the more memorable ones. He's cut! He's cut! Russian's cut! It's a bad cut! And now it's Rocky Balboa coming after Ivan Drago! 
So after getting thoroughly whooped and having been dropped countless times, Balboa has a vintage Rocky rally in the 15th and final round, and the Italian stallion, Rocky Balboa, slays the invincible beast known as Ivan Drago. It was an epic comeback of monumental proportions. If I can change, and you can change, we can change. Everybody can change! Rocky IV was merely a continuation of the formula Sly had perfected for the Rocky sequels. Get yourself a badass antagonist, build him up into this invincible, unbeatable force, and then watch Rocky get his ass kicked before rallying back to score a dramatic come-from-behind victory. That's what worked. And Rocky IV, like Rocky III before it, for me, these are the type of movies that are enjoyable every second the whole way through. This was true for me when I was nine, and it remains true for me now today in my 40s. As far as Rocky films go, Rocky three and four are nothing short of brilliant. Hey woman, hey woman, listen here. Since your old man ain't got no heart, maybe you'd like to see a real man. Get up, that boy, hey! I'm coming after him, you tell him. I tell you what, bring your pretty little self over to my apartment tonight, and I'll show you a real man. You want you get out of here? Rocky three truly had it all. It had Hulk Hogan prior to becoming the Hulkster when Hulkamania ran wild. It had Mr. T just before the successful run of the A-Team. All of the core cast members were present, and they were all superb. And then as an added bonus, in addition to having the traditional Rocky music, we also got Eye of the Tiger. And then, like any film from its day, we got the budding 80s bromance between Rocky and Apollo. You got me curious. You got me curious, Rocky. And you're gonna owe me a big favor. What favor? When it's over. You got me curious. You got me curious, Rob. You just make sure you wash them before you bring them back, all right? <laughs> Will do. You got me curious. After this, you owe me a favor. What favor? The main theme behind Rocky III was that Rocky had become civilized. And like any good manager, Mickey was trying to protect Rocky by shielding him from the bigger threats. Rocky wound up getting dominated in his matchup against Clubber Lang. And worse yet, Mickey took his final breaths in the immediate aftermath. And this scene between Stallone and Meredith was both powerful and touching, especially in the context of all that transpired between the two previously, and especially what transpired between the two recently. Dude, okay? I love you, kid. I love you. <laughs> Baby! This is... Big time! So Mickey is dead, Rocky is mentally broken, and Apollo swoops in to the rescue. Creed was determined to get Rocky hungry again. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but after the shit show training camp that Rocky got off to, I have a really difficult time believing Rocky would ever beat Apollo in a foot race. Early in their training, Apollo was running around like the Flash, and Rocky was slow as shit lumbering around. The rest of Rocky's training camp was awful too. Rocky could barely do the doggy paddle. And Balboa was getting schooled so badly by Creed in sparring that it always left me wondering why Creed didn't challenge Clubber Lang himself. So as usual, it was up to Adrian to talk some sense into Rocky. What's that truth, damn it? I'm afraid, all right? You wanna hear me say it? You wanna break me down, all right, I'm afraid. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. There is, for me there is. Why, you're human, aren't you? Get rid of it. It's gonna bother you for the rest of your life. Look what it's doing to you now. After that, Rocky starts training like a badass. Before he couldn't even do the doggy paddle, but now he's doing the butterfly, one of the most difficult swimming strokes there is, and he's swimming through that pool like a superhero. In sparring, Rocky is now too slick and too quick for Apollo. And not just in sparring, but in the sprint race itself. Surely Apollo must have been holding back, but even if he wasn't, 
How many trainer boxer duos celebrate a run like this? You got me curious. You got me curious, Rob. Apollo and Rocky love each other so much at this moment that they actually jump in for two separate embraces. But Apollo did his job. He got Rocky into shape, and Rocky had the eye of the tiger again. After I crucify him, you next. Just stay out of my face, Chuck. Don't turn your back on me, sir. We had a problem in front of Bella. Come on. I thought you said be cool. That was cool. I'm the champ. I'm the champ. I'll beat you like I did last time. You were ever looking behind me. So Rocky gets knocked all around the ring and dropped a few times by Clubber Lang, but we've seen this type of thing before. And Rocky rises to the occasion and outsmarts Clubber Lang with a better strategy that wears Clubber Lang out. Rocky's superior conditioning helped him flip the script, and Clubber is too tired to stop the onslaught. Rocky regained the title, and now he owes Apollo a favor. No TV, no newspapers, just you and me. Nothing, just you and me. Uh, Asian for beauty. Anything you say, Stan. Uh, I, I do all the work, all okay. Right. Wanna ring the bell? All right. Ding, ding. Hope you enjoyed, everyone. And in all seriousness, for better or worse, I first became interested in boxing when I was an eight-year-old kid watching Rocky III. And then a year or so after I first saw Rocky III on HBO, we had one of the greatest boxing wars of all time between Marvelous Marvin Hagler and Tommy the Hitman Hearns. My late father was a Hagler fan, so he was the one that got me watching actual boxing. And Hagler Hearns is the first boxing match I remember seeing. But for better or worse, Rocky III was what first got me interested in the sport of boxing. So I for one think Sylvester Stallone deserves the honor he received when he was inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame. I have to believe there are generations of other boxing fans out there who may have also first learned about the sport through the Rocky movies. I think Stallone has done a lot of good for the sport, and even recently, he was apparently instrumental in getting President Trump to grant a long overdue pardon to former champion Jack Johnson. So I appreciate Stallone's contributions to the sport, his good storytelling abilities, and his ability to really bring those stories to life on the big screen. Thanks for all the cinematic memories, Mr. Stallone. I look forward to watching the Creed sequel. So what are your favorite Rocky movies, and how would you personally rank them? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great night. You know, me and my wife went to the movies the other night, we saw Rocky. Do you accept the challenge for a rematch with Balboa? I reject the challenge because Balboa is no challenge. But I'd be more than happy to beat up on him some more. Which Rocky was it? One or two? Or three? Uh, one, I think. I don't know. Shut up, old man. I ain't going nowhere. And why don't you tell all these nice folks why you've been ducking me? Hey, did, did he have a mohawk? Like Mr. T? I don't know. I don't remember. The point is... Get out of my face. Look don't need nothing you got no more. Look don't need no hair has been messing up my corner. And you better get that bad look off your face before I knock it off. Was his manager dead or alive? Yeah. All right, forget Rocky. All right, forget I brought it up. Get it out of your head. No, I don't hate Balboa, but I pity the fool. And I will destroy any man who tries to take what I got.